Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm back in my native state of Minnesota and this is my favorite time of year. It's now early fall, the leaves are changing, it's pumpkin spice season, Halloween is closer than ever. This is the time of year when the snakes make their great migration from the swamps and wetlands that they spent the summer in to coming back here on the prairie to find their last few meals before they go down for their winter hibernation. So I'm gonna spend the day here in one of my favorite places to herp, the prairies of central Minnesota. And we're gonna see just how many snakes we can find in a day. This is the best time of year to find tons of snakes. I'm Dave Kaufman and these are my reptile adventures. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house and I use them exclusively for all my insect-eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. So it's now late September. As a matter of fact, I think today is the last day of September. I don't, I don't know, I, I don't pay attention to time. But this is the time of year when all the snakes are making their great fall migration. And all you really need to do to find tons of snakes is you don't need to flip anything. They're not seeking shelter yet. They're going to shelter. They're going to their winter hibernation areas from their summer locations. And I'll get into that in a little bit, but all you really need to do is slowly walk along the prairie until you see the pattern of a snake right in front of you. Look at this little guy right here. Hi, buddy. Come here, sweetheart. This is a little baby bull snake. Just hatched out within the past couple of weeks. What a cutie. Wow, look at the red on that belly. This is what I love about herping out on the prairie this time of year. You can find tons of little baby bull snakes that have just hatched within the past month or so, maybe even the past couple of weeks or so. And when they first hatch, they've got a small amount of time to find a meal and follow those scent trails that the mother left from the nest to a food source. And hopefully, after he gets his first couple of meals, he'll be able to find a scent trail that'll lead him to a burrow to where he'll overwinter. So even the adults are on their fall migration this time of year. They spend their summer in the cooler, wetter swamps and then in the fall, when the temperatures at night fall to 40s, maybe 30s, that's their cue to leave those summer swamps and start heading back out here on the prairie to eat their last few meals, fatten themselves up, and then find a rodent burrow to hibernate. But again, this is what I love about coming out here this time of year, is that you can find tons of these little baby bull snakes. And every time I find a little baby bull snake out here, or a baby hognose snake, or a baby anything, it always makes me smile because I know that this is the future generation of snake populations out here on the prairie. So he was following a scent trail, so I'm going to release him exactly where I found him so he can pick up that scent trail, and hopefully that'll lead him to a meal and lead him to a place to hibernate over the winter. Look at this, here's another one. Hi, buddy. Oh, look at him getting all rambunctious. Oh, yes, hi. Oh, yes, nice to meet you too, buddy. Man, again, this is what I love about coming out here this time of year, is you can find tons of little baby bull snakes like this, just wandering around the prairie, again trying to find that meal before they have to go down for hibernation. So I'm not gonna bother this guy any more than I already am. I'm just gonna let him go on his way, and I'm sure we're gonna find tons more. Oh, look at how surly he is. All right, so I'm not gonna even pick this guy up off the ground. I'm just gonna let him stay right where he is. And I'm sure we're gonna find a ton more baby bull snakes out here. So you might be thinking, doesn't it need to be hot for snakes to come out? And well, yes and no. And right now it's pretty chilly out here. It's about 15 or 16 degrees, which is the upper 50s if you live here in the United States. The ground temperature is still in the mid to upper 70s and therefore the snakes that are crawling on the ground are not as affected by the cold ambient air as you would think. 
they're still plenty warm and still plenty active. When nighttime temperatures fall down into the 40s, maybe even the 30s, again, that's the cue for snakes to begin their fall migration. So have a look at this. This is a thatching ant nest. And these are found all over the prairies. And why am I showing you this? It's in ant mounds like this that red-bellied snakes and smooth green snakes will hibernate. So this time of year, when you come across a big nest of thatching ants, that I just noticed somebody put a spoon in there. Um, okay. Uh, I can't say that's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen, but it's plenty bizarre. But as you're walking the prairie, when you see a big nest of thatching ants like this, look around it for red bellies and smooth green snakes, because in these huge ant mounds like this is where those snakes are hibernating. Very cool. All right, moving on. And uh, I'll just, uh, I don't know, take the spoon with me. Oh, here, let me, uh, sorry, buddy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, let me just take you. Right back there and shake you off and there you go. All right, come on spoon. Let's go find some snakes. All right, look at what this guy is. on the road. This is a really rare find. This is a baby Blanding's turtle. Whoa! It is so rare to actually see babies crawling around that this is only the second baby Blanding's turtle I've ever seen in my life. As a matter of fact, researchers have contacted me after I found that first one all those years ago, asked me so many details about it because even researchers are having issues finding freshly hatched baby Blanding's turtles. So with adult Blanding's turtles, they will become gravid in the swamps, and then when they're ready to lay their eggs, they will walk literally for miles into the middle of the prairie to deposit their eggs. And once those eggs hatch, these babies then have an equally long distance to get across that prairie to get back to those wetlands. And it's because this grass is so thick in the prairie and because these guys are so tiny, they're almost impossible to see crawling around the prairie. But just look at that awesome plastron. It's black and bright yellow. And as this turtle matures, that pattern on the plastron will actually change. And take a look at how flat that plastron is. As this turtle gets older, that plastron will get more dome-shaped. It'll get much bigger to the point where they almost look like box turtles. And if you notice his little chin there, he's got that classic Blanding's turtle orange chin, and that's gonna get more and more yellow and more bright as this turtle gets older. And look at that. He still has his egg tooth. This guy probably just hatched either today or maybe even yesterday. They don't keep that egg tooth for very long. Wow, you are one amazing turtle. But here's the problem. The problem is he has this really busy road to cross because he was heading to that prairie right over there across the street. And then on the other side of those trees is a pond and that's where he was heading. And if he was to do that by himself, he's not gonna make it across this road. So, good thing there's the friendly neighborhood YouTuber to help him across way over here. And we're gonna set him way over here by this fence. All right, there you go, little buddy. Reptile Uber at your service. <laughs> what an amazing find. He's got a very long way to go to get to that pond over there. But now that I got him across this road, he's definitely gonna make it. Um, that, that way, that, turn, turn around. Go, go, go that way, that way. Here, let me, let me assist. There you go, that way. Go that way. All right, there you go, little dude. With any luck, you're gonna live long enough to see the turn of the next century. All right, so I ran into Mark Bailey. And Mark Bailey, who breeds more ball pythons and awesome ball pythons, just found 
six foot ball python. Right, just found the biggest garter snake. Look at that. Whoa, that's a big monster. Come here. Oh. <laughs> Where are you going, sweetheart? Look at this. Oh my God, this is like perfect. I got him, I got him. Yep, yeah, thanks. Look at this. That is like a perfect garter snake. It looks like she just shed, or maybe he, probably at this size female. But this is a beautiful eastern garter snake. Look at that, absolutely flawless. Rich blacks, rich yellows. Man, what a big garter snake. This is just a flawless garter snake. Usually you see them all banged up. They've got scars and bungdens and things. This girl is just flawless. And look at this, she calms right down. What's with all the grass in my way? She calmed right down, she musked me, and man, I'll tell you, I absolutely love garter snake musk. I really wanna bottle it up and sell it as cologne to herpers. But you can find tons of these garter snakes out on the prairie this time of year. And you know, I've mentioned this before in other videos, why garter snakes have stripes instead of blotches like other snakes do, like bull snakes and hognose snakes that are out here. Why are garter snakes striped? Well, the answer is, is that it actually creates an optical illusion when they're evading predators. So when they're going through the grass, the stripes create this optical illusion and therefore the predator chasing them doesn't know if they're heading off in that direction or heading off in that direction when they're actually heading off in that direction. So it throws off any predators that are chasing him by creating that optical illusion with those stripes. And that garter snakes are so successful and so common it really is a testament to how well those stripes work in evading predators out here. But look at this, she's not trying to bite me. She's stopped musking, which is kind of sad because I love that smell. But man, you can find tons of these garter snakes out here on the prairie this time of year because they are also making their fall migration from the woodlands back out here on the prairie where they're going to hibernate. And what's interesting is, is that I mentioned how cold it is out here right now. I have actually found garter snakes in Minnesota in every single month of the year except January and February. I've actually seen these guys sunning themselves on snow banks in the middle of December on a warm December day, literally sitting out on snow banks. These are incredibly successful and incredibly hardy snakes out here. All right, girl, back to the prairie you go. Grab a couple of meals and have a good long winter. All right, here's another garter. Here's another garter. Oh, yo, I almost had him. No, I touched him and he disappeared. Oh, he's over here. Good job, Mark. Oh, nice, another garter. This one might be a little male. Nice catch. It's either a young one or a male, but what do you think? That's a male. That's a male. Nice little male out here cruising the prairie. Again, you can just find tons of garter snakes. They're everywhere. All right, off you go, little dude. Nice catch. You have succeeded where I have failed you, you know, once there's, again. There's, there's no garter snakes all year and Dave's like, you <laughs> What, you don't see a bunch of garter snakes no, out here? No, not at all. Dude, I see garter snakes, like I probably all, see, all year. I probably I see at least three or 4,000 garter snakes in this one field alone. Well, I have, not, not this year. Do you believe me? No. You shouldn't, yeah. That's a juvie. Man, I love this time of year. A nice little bull snake juvenile. Last year's baby maybe. Hard to tell out here in the wild. But man, I love this time of year. You can find so many snakes out here on the prairie this time of year. Look at this beautiful bull snake. Nice browns, nice yellows, nice body weight. Just a great juvenile bull snake. 
and usually you can find them with really thick pitch black splotches on them and sometimes they're brown and yellow like this but this is just a gorgeous healthy perfect bull snake out here on the prairie all right check this guy out he is just flawless oh, he's got a meal on him yeah yeah maybe a year old a uh, year and a half probably two or three yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so hard to tell because you know nobody's out here feeding them every week he's got a big body yeah are you done with him yeah. i'll let him go all right he was just here following a scent trail, so this is where I'm going to let him go. All right, buddy, off you go. <laughs> See you, little dude. See what I mean? This time of year when there's a chill in the air, the ground is still warm, that fall migration is happening, you can find tons of snakes out here on the prairie. And uh, Mark Bailey, you can find that out here too. Are you migrating at all? Not yet. Not yet, all right. Yeah, we have a few more 70 degree days. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, I just felt a couple of raindrops. Uh, yeah, we might have to take refuge. We might have to migrate here pretty soon. I just found a board, and it is illegal for a herper to find a board and not flip it. Let's do it. And I am rewarded with nada. That's a bummer. I found another board. Let us flip it. Again, rewarded with bupkis. Bummer. Oh, look at this. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Wait, where are you going? Where are you going? Come here. Say hi. Here's another baby bull snake. Wow, what is this? Four bull snakes for the day? Not too shabby. Look at that beautiful thing. Just out cruising around. Man, I love seeing baby bull snakes out on the prairie like this. And there are so many this time of year. What a cutie. And look at that. No hissing, no fussing. You, 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 you do know you're a bull snake, right? It looks like his eyes are a little opaque. It looks like he's going into maybe his first shed. Who knows, but we're not going to harass you too much. I'm just going to put you right back and let you go on your way. There you go, buddy. Man, I love seeing that. So awesome. So this has been just an incredible day out here. Within a matter of hours, I found maybe over 20, maybe 25 snakes. Most of those were garter snakes, but who can complain? Garter snakes are awesome. Most of them I didn't even pick up. Most of them I didn't even film. I stink enough like musk, but man, those bull snakes were awesome. And that baby Blanding's turtle, man, that was just the cherry on top. So real quick, guys, I want to give a shout out and a sincere thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. It's with your help that I can continue to make videos like this. So if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, that link is in the description below. You get early access, free swag, a lot of cool stuff. Stuff, go check out my patreon if you're already a patreon again thank you so much for all of your support and guys as always thanks for watching and until the next reptile adventure love the planet feed your reptile obsession and rattle on